From jewel in the palace to extraordinary attorney Wu, K-dramas have secured its place in the Pinoy pop culture diet. But what is it about these shows, especially in this time of streaming services, when so many series from all over the world compete for our attention? So, hi, I'm Rappler Entertainment Editor Margie DeLeon, and in this episode of Hello to Hallyu, Rappler's roundtable talk show on all things pop culture and Korean, we talk to a few of Rappler's biggest K-drama fans on the secret sauce that makes these shows so addictive. So, hello everybody. Um, let me introduce you guys one by one. Uh, hi, Isa from our LSE team. Hi, Margie. Hi, hi. G from Central Desk. Hello. <laughs> and hi, Nina from pr Production. Hello. Ayun. So, let's get right to it. So, lahat kayo nandito dahil K-drama fans kayo. Mm. So, one by one, parang first, when did you start watching Korean dramas? And what was the first K-drama you watched? Like, how did, and how did you discover it? Let's go with Isa. Mm, feeling ko elementary pa po. <laughs> like, you know, 10, 11 years old. Mas nauna ako manood ng K-dramas before like yung mga, um, How I Met Your Ma Mother. Like, hindi ko nga, hindi ko sila natapos. <laughs> compared sa panonood ng K-dramas. Tapos, um, Princess uh, Ours, I think, yung pinakauna. I remember watching My Girl, Dream High, yung mga ganun, yung mga medyo matagal na talaga, around 2006 to 2008, sa nandang release. Tapos, sorry po, pero medyo pirata ako nung, <laughs> nung nagsimula. Aga. <laughs> <laughs> like, kasi di ba, like, di, before wala pang, hindi pa available yung Netflix, or kaya yung mga V ngayon. So, that eh, parang bumibili pa kami yung CD. Tapos, usually, ito check namin siya. Like, dapat ito check namin yung final episode. Kasi minsan, hindi na sila English subtitles. Parang <laughs> Arabic subtitles na siya. So, parang, ilang beses kami nabigtin naman na parang umuwi kami, bumili kami ng ilang CD. Tapos, hindi na namin alam kung saan, hindi na namin alam kung paano siya natapos. Kasi hindi na, <laughs> hindi na namin maintindihan. Tapos, wala rin naman siyang website na mapupuntahan para ito siya. So, parang ganun yung struggles niya before. So you really had to like your K-dramas because my effort to like involved. Okay, ikaw, G. Ako, ano, di ba nag-start dito, Jewel in the Palace, mm. saka Lovers in Paris. Paris. Yun, yung, sa Seven ba yung ABS? Mm, well, tapos ABS yeah, yung Lovers. Yeah. Uh, pero hindi, kasi dahil sa TV sila, hindi ako nakasubaybay. Mm. So, yun yung mga unang, like, I, I was aware of those dramas. Pero yun talagang tinapos ko talaga from start to finish. It's a kid drama called Sweet 18. Um, Yung guy kasi sa Lovers in Paris, yung second lead, siya yung bida dun sa Sweet 18. So, parang sinundan ko siya and all. But, um, yung, nung time na yun, nung natapos, yung natapos ko na from start to finish, yun na, yun na yung gateway, gateway drama ko to Korean dramas. Ikaw, Nina. Na-pressure ako dun sa biggest K-dramas dati. <laughs> kasi like, mga 2016 lang ako talaga nag-start. Although, okay same yun. na yung mga Jumong, ganyan, mm -hmm. Jewel in the Palace, sa GMA, nung dinadub pa sila dun. Mga grade school ako nun, tapos nakikita ko rin. So, <laughs> sorry, na-date tayo. Oo. Hindi ko amin yun. Nakikita ko na siya na like, ah, alam kong hindi to Philippine produced. Kasi mm. halata naman, mm. setting-wise, ganyan. Mm. Pero, hindi ko pa, hindi pa ako pay attention sa plot, ganyan. Nak nakikita ko lang siya. So, I guess yun yung introduction. But 2016, my first gay drama was The Heirs. Mm -hmm. Although 2013 yung The Heirs. Mm -hmm. Pero hindi ko alam, hindi ko na maalala kung sino na nagpilit sa akin na panoorin. Right. Pero I gave it a shot, tapos... Wala na, down the rabbit hole na from there. <laughs> yeah. It's fun here. Yeah. <laughs> like, ako, like, I've only really started watching K-dramas from Netflix. Oh. So, like, to hear all these titles, like, I've never heard of. Like, syempre, <laughs> narilig ko lang yung Jewel in the Palace, yung ganun. But I've never heard of all these titles. So, parang, I can only imagine how big the genre really is. So, ito na yung mahirap na question. Ano yung favorite nyong K-drama? No. Like, so far of all time. And what was it about it na nagustuhan nyo? Let's go again with Isa. Hello. Wait, so Isa lang? Ha? Isa oh, lang. Okay. Pwede na. Pwede na. Pwede na. Let's limit to Let's limit to three. Sige, I'll be nice. I'll be nice. Oh my gosh. Mm, Princess Ors talaga. Like, cute-cute talaga siya. I mean, ano kasi siya? Parang ro royal setting. Tapos wala lang. Kilig rom-com. Ganun. Mga ganong trademark na k-dramas. Tapos, um, di ko sure if under drama ba siya. Pero yung suspense series na voice, ni Lihana. So parang ano lang siya, magaling lang siyang babae na nasa police department tapos nakaka-solve siya ng mga crime mysteries. Basically like sobrang siya lang nakakahadap ng context kasi parang may sobrang sensitive ng ears niya. Basta ang sobrang 
well thought of nung mga every episode parang meron silang cases tapos paiba-iba yung paiba-iba yung suspects tapos siya lang talaga nakakasol so parang yun yung isa sa favorite um, aspects ko when it comes to like K-drama sobrang well thought of nung concept nila tapos talagang hindi mo talagang hook ka talaga sa mangyayari na ang dami na lang twist and turns na hindi masyadong pilit na parang kahit pag pinapanood mo pati ikaw mapapasama kasi ako paano ba siya masasolve maka magsas parang magkakaroon ka lang sa sarili suspects tapos wala ang ganda niya lang <laughs> yun na lang muna <laughs> it's, it's interesting to say na parang those are such two completely different mm. ano no oh, parang shows, shows but they uh-oh. all fall under the same genre but we'll talk about that a bit later sige ikaw G Okay. Lima yung <laughs> sila pera ko, pero pin, ano ba ito? Oh, okay. Ano? Um, not in order. <laughs> yung una, baka magalit. Oo, baka may magtampo ako. Yung una ko, ano, Coffee Prince, which is everyone's favorite. Kasi doon talaga na-discover si Gong. Mm. Even before Goblin. And uh, for me, it really stands the test of time. Like, I can... Re- rewatch. Medyo kasi drawn ako lagi to dramas so that are rewatchable. Mm. So, pag ni-rewatchable siya, gusto ko pa siyang panoorin even now. Mm-hmm. Ibig sabihin talagang quality siya. So, Coffee Prince. And then, tw- uh, Reply, pero hindi yung favorite na lahat. <laughs> hindi <laughs> Mas favorite ko yung 1997. True, yun yung siya wala. Yung unang-unang oh. series. Kasi dyan talaga, noong 2012, noong nag-start talaga yung parang, wait, parang nag-level up yung quality ng mga Korean dramas. That year, ang, quali- ang ganda talaga ng mga dramas that year. Sinimulan siya ng Reply 1997, mm-hmm. tapos mayroong Arang in the Magistrate, ano pa. Basta madaming magagandang dramas that year. And Reply 1997 was so different kasi nga slice of life yung ano niya. Hindi siya, pa- paano ko ba siya explain? Parang it, 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 it's set in the 1997 about a fangirl. So talagang kung fangirl ka, okay, matuturoan ka talaga okay. into it. Oh, si A-Ping. Yeah. Kung, pa- yeah, 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 yeah. kung, pa- kung pa- paano yung pag-fangirl in 1997. It was so fun. So that's second. And then third is the drama that I always recommend to everyone. Like, parang pag tinanong nila ako, okay, ito yung gateway drama na simulan mo, healer. Like, marami na akong nabudol dito sa office <laughs> na panoorin yung healer. <laughs> Pero healer, healer, hindi ko, hindi ako masyadong ano lagi sa action eh. Kasi action, mas action yung genre niya. Pero with healer, siguro kasi dahil tukol din siya sa journalism. So, <laughs> so in a way, Uh, nakarelate ako and then sobrang ganda talaga nung storytelling from start to finish like hindi, walang tapon siya so mm-hmm. kaya I'd recommend it to everyone medyo slow burn siya sa start pero we love slow burn yeah once you get to the good part tuloy-tuloy na siya Mag- you'll get hooked to it yeah. um, I, I imagine na when you say na nag-level up na yung mga shows during mm-hmm. the, the Reply 1997 time was that like parang it was leveling up from the usual like telenovela style like parang um, yeah. romance romance kasi di ba Korean dramas are also very trope heavy. Yes. Mm-hmm. Like they they repeat the same themes mm-hmm. actually. And siguro until 2012, puro ganun yung mga shows during that time na parang best friends to lovers or um rich, cohabitation, rich. Okay. yeah, rich, rich secrets. Rich Oo. So parang medyo paulit-ulit tapos nung nagkaroon ng ganun na parang barkada set in the 1997 about fangirling. Parang wait, ano, I've never watched something like this before. So it was so so fun. Okay. Ayun. And you, Miss, <laughs> ano, Miss Nina Liu? Um, ako rank. Ako rank. Ay, wow. Oh, wow. Oh, okay. 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 Oh, so, don't come for me, guys. Watch out, so, people. Oh. Rank. Okay. So, third muna, weightlifting fairy. Oh. Kasi for me, parang, yun nga, maraming k-drama na like, super cheesy na kilig-kilig lang. Pero for me, sakto lang yung amount sa weightlifting. Kasi may iba na parang overbearing na, ito na naman tayo, we get it, you're happy. Like, you know? Ganun lang siya. So parang, for, if you're watching that for 16 episodes, na yun lang yung progression, mag- mauumay ka in a way. Pero for me, weightlifting, super lighthearted lang siya. Tapos sobrang natural. Well, dahil maganda rin kasi chemistry ng leads. Um, so yun, weightlifting. Second is, ite one class. Mm. Kasi biased ako kay Pork Soju. <laughs> But also, tuwang-tuwa ako talaga nung pandemic. As in, tinawid niya talaga ako through, through the early lockdown. Kasi for me, um, I really like one, the OST. Parang just aside from the plot, ang ganda nung music na for me, it, it really helped drive the, st- <laughs> drive the story. Drive the story. Pero um, yon And then thir- first is Chicago Typewriter. So I actually watched Chicago Typewriter kasi I took... Um, an elective in college, as in Korean drama, so we studied it. Di ko alam, yung recent, like, nabalita yun recently. Anyway, yon. Tapos, 
we we had to analyze specific dramas. Tapos yun yung isa sa assign. So pinanood ko siya as a reading for class. Diba? Oh, ang saya, ang saya. Um, but then I really ended up loving it. Kasi like what you was mentioning nga, very trope heavy, which is cliche. Pero Chicago typewriter kasi, there's romance, but then it's also very friendship centric. Tapos yung, ano pa niya, it was contextualized in like, uh, may time travel aspect siya. So like, they were time traveling between the present and then like, the Korean War era. Korean-Japanese War era. So for me, that was very interesting. Kasi, um, nandun yung historical side. But then, parang how they meshed that with the present and whatever conflict they were going through sa story mismo. So, and the actors were really good. You are in. You are in bias din ako. So, yun. Okay, thank solid. you for your very ranked. <laughs> Brave soul. Yeah. Um, it's interesting you mentioned the pandemic. Kasi, dun din ako nag-start manood ng K-dramas. And I think I would as- assume that a lot of people, a lot of Filipinos started watching then K-dramas sa Netflix. And yung theory ko kung bakit sobrang naka-addict siya, especially during the pandemic, is because they last so long. Like, one episode is usually, like, an hour, over an hour, hour yeah. ba? An hour, like, minimum. Yeah. Ayun. Parang, but also, I can find it a bit of a challenge then. Like, na, ang haba ng yeah. isang episode. It's a movie siya, yeah. basically. Yeah. Wala lang. Napansin ko lang. Ayun. So, next question. So, um, there have been you know, a lot of K-dramas over a, a long period of time. So, syempre, nag-evolve na, siguro, yung mga... K dramas from now, from before to now. So, ano yung mga market differences between yung mga earlier K dramas at yung mga pinapanood natin ngayon? Any, anyone? I mean, mo is G mentioned rin siya kanina na parang yung nag-level up nga talaga yung quality. Kasi yung earlier K dramas natin yun, mostly romance and their romance genre. Pero ngayon ang dami na like it's either ang dami ring legal, legal um related dramas. Mm-hmm. Tapos, um, feeling ko din, ang dami na yung dramas na parang strong female characters compared din sa mga una na parang, I mean, Voice Over Flowers na si Jandy na parang, kung titina natin siya ngayon, feeling ko makakansa lang F4 Tama. kasi sobrang, <laughs> sobrang shitty nila as a person. Um, feeling, ayun, parang medyo, medyo progressive, progressive na rin yung things na tinatakad nila. Like, sometimes, ang dami na rin K-dramas na parang nagtatakal about mental health. Tapos mag- sobrang ganda rin talaga ng um, portrayal nila. Yun din yung masasabi ko when it comes to like um, their production. Talagang pinag-iisipan, like mayroong background research. Like, um, also, yun, parang ang dami na rin size of life stories. Um, mostly friendship, um, family, yung mga values na ganun. Tapos parang ang dami na rin, ang daming like yung plots nila sometimes, even like the most basic things, na parang the recent na talagang tumatak sa akin was Move to Heaven, na parang it's about it's about like yung mga taong naglilinis ng mga gamit ng mga patay. Diba parang sobrang Ooh. hindi mo siya, parang hindi siya madalas na napag-uusapan, pero ang ganda sa kanila is like they could like bring light to this like even parang most basic stuff. So ayun, parang Sobrang naging broad na rin yung, yung tinatakal ng K-dramas ngayon. Tapos yun, ang, dahil na rin, I think, sa mas accessible na rin siya. Kaya mas nagiging, um, parang madali na siyang makahatak ng mga tao. As compared to like before, na talaga minsan, ta- minsan hihintay mo pa matapos, matapos yung buong series bago mo siya mapanood. Pero ngayon, naabangan mo na siya weekly, which makes it more fun. Yeah, yeah. Um, anybody else? Like, any other observations? Yeah, ako, yung, to- yung today, definitely mas mataas yung budget ng no. <laughs> production. Kitang-kita mo talaga na... And, and just, kunyari, Netflix doing their originals and even uh, Pachinko is under... Apple um, TV. Apple TV, okay. right? So, parang uh, these um, streaming sites actually investing mm-hmm. in K-dramas. Before, pili lang... Yun, y- yung sinabi ko kanina na um, Reply 9 to 7, it was a cable channel called TVN. Tapos sobrang um, bago pa siya nung time na yun kasi nga meron lang parang... KBS. Parang, oh, yun, KBS, NBC, CC, parang uh, SBS. So parang yun sila yung ABS GMA ng Korea na. Alam mo kung... Alam mo lang kung saan lumalabas. So when there was TVN and then this dramas na sobrang hindi siya pinapakita sa mainstream, doon talaga nag-start na yun nga parang, wow, I've never watched this before. But 
I, I will make the case for older dramas kasi um, feeling ko yung mga uh, okay don't go after me <laughs> Again, <laughs> <don't> go after. <laughs> I love Chloe pero I agree gateway kasi yung Chloe it's really, yeah. I think that's that's really why yeah. people love it because it's a it's a gateway drama and that's the quality of dramas nung before na talagang fun um, nice. they don't take themselves too seriously so yun yung medyo uh, fantastic uh, mm-hmm. na Siyempre, mas mataas na yung mas mataas na yung budget ng Chloe, mm-hmm. di ba? Kasi uh, even the actors. Pero um, I think yung, yung mga earlier dramas, yung mga 2000s, early 2010s, yan yung quality nila na parang um, they really bank on the actors and actresses. And even if the story is, ano na nga, paulit-ulit na, but it's because the storytelling is so good and yun nga, it's so fun. So you join there. <laughs> Meron kang suspension of disbelief. Maraming ganyan sa kita. Yeah. Pero, di ba, because it's fun. So, you'll just, ano, go with the ride. Uh, siguro to add lang then like on the production side. <laughs> well, it's a producer. Well, it's a producer. Well, obviously naman, the, the big difference is the shift from broadcast to to digital. Mm-hmm. Na obviously, like you mentioned nga, only broadcast companies were making the dramas, especially, specifically for television. So, yung quality nung recording there's a big difference from how HD it is now and not even that parang just like all the the shots you know the framing parang through time I think they also became more intentional as in even kunyari may scene na specific na nangyayari nagaaminan yung whatever or like ma- mahili, parang foreshadowing device na rin sometimes mm-hmm. ginagamit nila yung, yung camera work so that's really interesting to me and budget wise parang I think it's also cost throughout the years um, fact check me on this somebody. But I know, I know. Um, the Korean government also started like supporting the industry more, like yes. giving budget to it. Because it's soft power, talaga ng South Korea yung entertainment industry nila. And b- even before K-pop started booming, parang dramas mas na unang yes. develop. So, dagdag na rin yun sa you know, pag increase ng quality ng mga pinoproduce nila. Yeah, tama yun. Uh, parang I read that uh, the Korean government. Parang, I think in the early 90s ba yun, yeah. parang really went out of their way to boost their cultural parang value. Mm. So that came in with the with the TV and the music and stuff like that. Kaya then my K-pop, yeah, ano, yeah. Resur- uh, not resurgence, I mean boom. Mm-hmm. Um, going back to Chloe, <laughs> yung, parang one of the reasons kung bakit na-hook din ako, kasi parang syempre I had a lot of misconceptions about what K-dramas were. Like, inisip ko lang, oh, it's all just like romantic fluff yeah. and whatever. Tapos na hook ako kasi it featured North Korea. Mm-hmm. So parang that fact, parang the fact na I, I, I always had this assumption that they wouldn't want to talk about stuff like that. Yeah. But for them to like show parang kind of slice of life then ng mga North Koreans yes. doon. Parang wala lang, parang na, na-amaze lang ako. Tapos uh, regarding Netflix, um, I was lucky enough to interview yung head of content, Korean content for Netflix like a few months ago. I, I remember that. Um, so, parang the fact that we got an opportunity to talk to the Korean head of content and not the, any other head of content, <laughs> parang just goes to show how important yung Korean, yeah, ano, yeah. Parang, Mark, Mark. yeah, this was an interview not only among Filipino journalists, but like uh, all, over, all over the world. Mm. So, parang it is something that was so important to Netflix. Tapos yun nga, parang the, the way I heard the, the head of content talk about it, like, ang dami lang pera. And alam mo yun, parang talagang um, they they really expressed how much um, how much freedom they now have yeah. to do whatever they want with their ano. so this goes to show the popularity yeah. so and going back to the more local end so Filipinos just like sa K-pop were some of the biggest consumers of K-dramas <laughs> so ano ba yung nasa K-drama na sobrang nakaka-addict for Filipinos specifically like what do you Pogi guys think? Sila. <laughs> Tama. I mean, let's start there. <laughs> oh, okay. Sina. Ni, drop me. Me, Park Seo Joon nga ako sa Liwa in Bias. Sino pa ba? Lahat si Nam Ju Yuk, Lee, Lee Jong Suk. Uh, Maganda na siya. Oh, ay rank ka ra ka din. Rank din. Actually, iniisip ko like they're, they're slightly different from mga Pinoy idol, uh, Matinee mm-hmm. idols natin, no? Mm-hmm. Parang they seem more sensitive? Yes. No? Okay, yun. So, tama naman yung guess ko. <laughs> Ikaw, kayo, kayo. Ikaw muna. Uh, feeling ko kasi masyadong mahilig yung Filipinas sa kilig-kilig. And it's very apparent, sa, lalo na sa mga rom-coms natin. Um, 
when it comes to like the local adaptations ng mga K-dramas, most of our K-drama adaptations are like I fall under the rom-com category, Lovers in Paris, My Girl, Coffee my Prince. Love from the star. Yeah, My Love from the Star. Mostly talaga parang dapat, 'di ba? Alam nilang something na magpapakilig siya sa audience. Tapos I feel like personally um kasi hindi sila like yung rom-com stories ng game drama light lang yung hindi ka mas stress sa ano nila sa relationship nila hindi siya complicated wala sure. I mean <laughs> most of them chan parang hindi katulad sa Pilipinas na mostly may mga cheating although i mean obviously oh, meron naman meron naman ako pero like dami. Uh, madami naman pero like hindi siya yung ganun na ang daming nangyayari Mm-hmm. Or mostly, yung mga pinapanood ko kasi ayoko na ma-stress sa relationship ng iba. So, doon lang sa mga chill, fun, fun, ano. Tapos, ayun, I feel like factor in yung similarities natin sa Korean culture when it comes to like family values, right. close family ties. So, parang medyo nakaka-relate yung mga tao doon na parang dapat mag-respect ka sa magulang or like mga family-related, family-themed content na parang um, pumapatok rin siya mostly sa Filipino audience. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I agree with it with that yung very close kasi yung when it comes to family values mm-hmm. and yun yung yung puso ng mga storya i agree na i think that really strikes a chord with filipinos mm-hmm. but also going back to the uh, killing love story ako personally i'm more drawn to the fact na uh, what excites me as a fan is that i never get the same right love team different ano story lang pero it's the same pero and, kilig pa rin uh-oh. every time mm-hmm. yeah. it works kasi great. parang it always excites me na okay this guy na alam kong ganito yung range ng acting niya na pair with this girl it's parang oh, wait uh, how will that work mm-hmm. and then when it happens parang wow okay it makes sense ang I, I'm, parang sobrang natuwa ako dun sa hindi sila ganong ka love team centric because it really Uh, opens the possibilities of the storytelling. Hindi, hindi, hindi sila masyadong, hindi na limit yung kung saan nila pwedeng dalhin yung story. Kasi nga, everyone is okay to be paired with. Well, except siguro yung mga <laughs> naging mag-joke. Mag-joke. <laughs> At <laughs> break. <laughs> Pero yan. Also to add, parang variety din in terms of variety of dramas. Ang dami kasing, yun nga, in terms of storytelling, it, there's a story for everyone for yeah. K-dramas, I think. Kasi sa Filipino dramas, parang recurring nga na, Um, yung family drama, ganyan. So, hindi naman ganun yung situation ng lahat. Or I think people also appreciate seeing themselves represented in one way or another. So, like, I think lahat ng professions na cover na ng k-drama. <laughs> or, like, even nga yung mga, like what Isa was saying, yung mga very arbitrary na naglilinis ng ano, ng sa sementeryo, mga ganun. Parang naiisip nila yung mga ganun ideas. And for you, it's, uh, you either come from a place na, oh, you want to relate, Um, to a certain situation, or you just want something completely different. Parang may options ka kung baga. So you're, you never, there's so much content to consume, which I, which is why I think people just keep consuming it. Napatsan ko din yung, ano, yung humor ng mga K-dramas. It's very Filipino din. Mm-hmm. Yung parang may pagkakenkoy na yeah. parang, yeah, basta na, na-gets ko yun. It's, inter- it's interesting you pointed out yung parang different themes, different ano, kinds of uh, storylines. Kasi, yung itatanong ko sa inyo, like, stuff like Squid Game, for example, like, does that technically fall under the K-drama genre? Yeah. Anything yes. can fall. Anything. <laughs> Basta Korean. 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 Kasi talagang, there really are different genres yeah. in K-drama. Like, right. merong um, dramas about badminton. Mm. Or, or, ano ba? football or what, yeah, whatever, cooking, whatever, whatever you whatever you think of siguro meron kaming masasabi ah okay may, dra- may drama about that kahit na sobrang onti pa lang nung key dramas pero as long as they're produced by Korean production mm-hmm. yon key drama yan mm-hmm. and that's that kaya siya exciting kasi nga may mga ano na ha pa paano nagagawa ng storya ah? kunyari merong story about um, mga part timers mga alba yung tawag sa Korea convenience sila yung si Gok yung po ano i forgot the drama anyway the 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 story is about yung mga nag strongest delivery man yeah. <laughs> okay okay so, yeah, 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 so yeah. nag deliver sila ng 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 ano hindi ko pa sila papanood daw but the, the the concept na okay the lives of delivery men mm-hmm. parang naisip ba natin yun di ba parang sobrang likot ng utak nila mm-hmm. na gagawa na yung ganung sa Okay. And parang they all seem so relatable. Yeah. Diba? Parang I think 
one running thing then sa mga K dramas is like um, even I don't know. Pasa parang parang there's really something very uh, at home and normal feeling among the characters. So um, what do you call this? It, this is a topic now. This is this next question is probably going to trigger uh, Isa because <laughs> she's <laughs> oh, no, because <laughs> you've written about <laughs> it. <laughs> okay, because si Isa, so she's our resident K K person in general, <laughs> like non-Korean Korean. Um, and you wrote a piece about uh, you crowdsourced our readers over ho- their feelings over um, Filipino adaptations mm. of Korean dramas, like whether dapat ituloy yung ganitong ganitong um, practice or hindi so how do you personally feel isa Ay, about <laughs> I did it all this it was ano a, a properly journalistic and objective <laughs> ano assessment from based on ano yung mga crowd source so now is the time yeah oo so <laughs> pero ikaw like do you feel like it's a good thing a bad thing a so-so thing what is it Honestly, before writing it, medyo, ano na ako, sabi ko, ano ba yan, yearly, taon-taon na lang, meron na naman, parang minsan kapag may nagbo-boom na kay drama sa Philippines, papapaisip ka, ah, yeah, kukunin na ng GMA or ng ABS, ganun lagi. Um, tsaka considering na, ang tagal na eh, like, around 2000, early 2000s pa tayo nag a parang minsan mapapaisip ka na, wala na ba silang, hindi ba, si, wala ba silang, ano, para mag-isip ng original content, sana. Um, kasi for me parang yung ang dami nang sabi ang mostly yung mga tao nag-know dun sa dun sa article call out article and ang daming feeling sa mga tao gusto ko lang hindi lang hindi lang to hindi na to me you, you're gonna <laughs> cry <laughs> on their behalf okay oh go oh, oh. na parang akala ko ang daming magno-know which is gets naman kasi nga di ba parang give give our producers naman sana like more creative freedom to pursue stories na mas relatable sana sa mga Filipinos. Um, tsaka, alam rin kasi sometimes differences also sa cultural aspects ng ano, Filipinos and Koreans na parang, paano mo siya matatranslate kapag inadapt mo siya mm. locally? Like, for example, yung nag, may mga bali-balita raw na yung crash landing on you, di ba? Parang, parang i-adapt. Alam rin nagsasabi, ano yan? Parang yung North Korea <laughs> oh. and South Korea. Di ba? Even like aspects yeah, yeah, yeah. like that na parang, oh, ano? Kahit yung sa Descendants of the Sun, na parang ang mga tao, bakit may military troop ba tayo? Eh, di ba, medyo military-centric na yung story. Yeah. So, parang, ang daming, nag- ang daming concerns na nilis na ganun. Pero kasi, ang dami ding nagsasabi na parang, ang dami nagsasabi kasi na not everyone has access to like this K-dramas mm-hmm. na kapag, as it is, na parang, hindi naman lahat nakakaintindi ng English subtitles, wala namang pambayad sa Netflix. So, I feel, sabi nila, deserve naman raw ng mga Filipino audience na to learn more about these stories. Pero, in, our, like, in a more local context. Tapos, nasa, nakadepende na rin naman raw yan sa mga creatives kung paano nila ipapursue yung ganun stories. Um, also, pero ang, ang funny thing, kasi ang daming, ang daming nag-aatake, like, more of like sa mga um, not necessarily sa actors or like sa fans, pero yung mga producers mismo na parang sometimes kasi parang nag-ride on ng Laura sa, sa popularity ng K-dramas. Kasi obviously kapag, di ba, may name recall eh, na parang may following na agad. So pag, pag nag-adapt tayo ng local, K, ng local, um, ng K-dramas, parang sure hit na may manonood at may manonood talaga. Either because gusto nilang makita yung local adaptation or pa- parang makikiechos na. Yeah. <laughs> Maganda ba yung pagkakagawa nila or hindi? Um, pero ayun, ang dami rin kasi nagsasabi na parang sometimes, sometimes hindi raw kasi mas- yung viewers mismo, hindi masyadong binibigyan ng chance yung Filipino, Filipino series. Um, kaya parang napo-force rin yung ibang producers to just adapt K-dramas na lang. So parang sobrang ang dami niyang ang daming debates. Ang daming baggage. So, sobrang interesting po niya. Basahin niyo po yun. <laughs> ah, dami. So, I love it. Ang takeaway ko, parang you, you wrote with a bias in mind. Oo, oh, parang and then, ayoko. Oo, oh, and then parang you Pero, came out oh. of it like mas balance. Okay, well, thank you readers. <laughs> uh, kayo, um, do you guys have any strong feelings mm-hmm. about adaptations? Ako, I don't have strong feelings. Kasi, like, you my girl, I really mm-hmm. like that. Hindi really? ko siya sinubaybay yan. Pero, sobrang natuwa ako nung tinray na nung ginawa siya mm-hmm. si Gerald din si Kim. It was really a good take on mm-hmm. on a very good K-drama. Mm-hmm. So medyo wala akong strong feeling siguro basta 
as a fan lang, just stay true to the material. Like, you don't have to follow, follow it. everything. Yeah, pero basta, wag, kasi maganda yung original eh. So parang, uh, kunyari yung startup, nagulat ako na walang, wala yung bida. Tama? Tama ba? I, I, I would. <laughs> wala. Ay, meron naman ata. Pero I mean, ang yung bida sa... Si, ano, I mean, ah, meron. Wait lang. Wait lang. <laughs> <Or, laughs> right, 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 right now. Spoil ba na? Okay, right now our viewers <laughs> are like screaming <laughs> at the, ano. Hindi naman ata siya spoiler. Kasi, oh, no, pero oh, kung kasi iba siya yung... Kasi basta iba tayo yung... Iba yung plot. Iba yung plot. Iba yung, okay. yung okay. makatuluyan. Bakit uh-huh. siya yung ganito? Uh-huh. Yeah, so parang yeah, yeah, yeah. nagulat talaga ako na parang, wow, they're really changing it. Yeah. Na siguro ito yung alternative ending na gusto ng mga tao or whatever. Pero parang, how do, how, how would they pull it off? Siguro, yun lagi yung question ko, if ever they, whenever they do a, an adaptation. So, I'm okay lang naman Ikaw, do you feel anything? Um, <laughs> I guess, magtanggol ko slight yung mga nag adapt I, I, It's a big difference naman from before na parang, kasi dati we used to dub. Mm-hmm. Diba? Dub lang. Dub. Pero I think kahit dub lang naman, they still had to purchase rights for it yeah. and stuff. So, I think the nice thing about adapting now, is their purchasing. Pero at least Filipinos naman na yung binibida nila. Mm. So in terms of preserving the story, as like if you're an avid K-drama fan, um, sadly, baka that's not something you, you're gonna get. Pero I guess in terms of Philippine entertainment industry, maganda na kahit pa paano, our actors also have the chance to explore these types of stories. Na yun nga, like we said, we can't organically come up with ourselves. But then at least, hindi sila nalilimit. And hindi din nalilimit yung nakikita ng tao sa performance na kaya ng iba. Like, sa Flower of Evil, si Lovey tsaka si Piolo, diba? Super different ng typical roles na they play from the characters mm-hmm. na they, they adapted. So, I, I think that's very interesting and fun to to, to watch. Mm-hmm. Si Jodie. Yeah, yeah. Sa World of the Mary. Yeah, yeah. Uh-huh. yeah. yeah. Which, naging ano talaga, successful yung mga scenes, diba? So, yeah. uh-huh. Tama. Like, it, it, was, it was viral on its own yeah. Yeah. In, that, in that sense. Um, yun, you mentioned in sa Flower of Evil, parang a good point then that I can see some mga adaptations is you know it, it pushes the Filipino industry to try new things mm. so maybe in the future they can do things can on their own on like yeah, baby yeah. steps yeah, parang yeah, exactly. like I remember um, like the, 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 the flower of evil there was a part na in, in an early episode naka hang outside the balcony oh, oh, si Piolo, ah, yeah, yeah. character ni Piolo. and was like one of the first uh, parang he's never done that before I don't think the production of uh, ABS had ever done that before. So, alam mo yun, yung parang talagang it really pushes people to to try new things. So, hopefully in the future, we can do our own. Ayun. Ay, ay, may naalala lang akong like, important main uh, parang point na sinabi ng leaders regarding adaptations. Kasi usually, K-Dramas test only for like 16 episodes mm. na. Parang 16 hours, technically. Eh, compared mo minsan kapag ina-adapt na siya sa ah, teleser. Oh, sobrang humahaba na siya. Imagine nyo yung na-approvincia na 7 years. Paano yep. pag may teleser, may K-Drama adaptation tayo na umabot ng 7, no, seven years? Hindi <laughs> naman sana. Pero ganun yung mga nagiging problema ng, ay parang isang major concerns ng K-Drama mm. fans. Sa parang papahabain pa nila. Lalo na kasi, di ba, daily yung, yeah. eh, eh, parang daily episodes tayo. Mm-hmm. So, parang yun yung medyo um, tinitingnan. How will they make it na parang hindi siya nakakasawa? Hindi siya magiging dragging. Kasi parang obviously, minsan um, teleseries should like, in the Philippines, usually like last for like six months. Ganon. Parang paano mo siya, paano mo mag, mag paano mo siya, pa, pa, paano mo papahawawin yung mga adaptations na ganon when the material was like so short. Mm-hmm. So, ayun. Okay. Um, you guys touched on uh, what do you call this um, subtitles a bit. Yeah. Um, is Paterno here? Ah, yes, <laughs> yes, behind us. So, so before the recording of this show, um, we were trying to convince Paterno to watch uh, Korean content, oh. and he said na um, tinatamad siyang magbasa ng subtitles. <laughs> so, but the thing is, like now, subtitles are something na ini-embrace ng people all around the world I na. I English pinapanood ko. Oh, may subtitles. <laughs> oh, tama. Oh, really? So, um, in connection with that, so naging popular na yung K-dramas globally. Yeah. Like, it, it's gotten to the point na people are, parang even lazy Americans are reading subtitles now. So, di ba nanalo pa nga yung Parasite mm-hmm. sa Oscars and everything. So, what is the, parang, we know the appeal of K-dramas to Filipinos, pero what makes it so universal? Like, like what is it about dramas na parang kahit people from the, the most westernized places parang love it so much, eat it up so much. Ako, ano, feeling ko kasi di ba yung boom talaga during the pandemic, mm. I believe, na, na, na naging global talaga siya. So I think 
may meron talagang contribution yung pandemic in that we were all at home and we had so much time. And so for me, I think people found comfort or they escaped through yeah. K-drama, which is let's let's face it, escapism naman talaga ang some of the dramas, if not all. Pero what's what's good about it is um, for me kasi sakto lang yung unlike you sabi mo kanina na ang haba ng one one for me sa sobrang sakto ng one one episode na one hour because if you are not binge binging a, a show ah. kaya it's it's ongoing and you're just watching it per kasi diba two episodes per week yeah. so not on the same day so it's kaya Wednesday Thursday one episode and then you're done so parang okay wait anong susunod tapos yung susunod na episode uh, on the next day and then next week na ulit maka, maka, ma, so parang that yung yung catch yung pull na yon yung yun talaga yung favorite ko lalo na kapag ang ganda ng cliffhanger ng uh-huh. ng pangalawang episode na parang okay isang week bago ulit bago ko ulit ano mapapanood but then again yun nga ang nangyari na this time is dahil may mga shows minsan sa Netflix na binabagsak nila sa buo eh. yeah. although parang ngayon mas episodic na pero before binabagsak nila ng isang buo and Um, for me, sweet spot yung 16 episodes. Misal nga 20 na habaan na ako eh. May mga ep- uh, may mga dramas kasi na nagiging 20. And then merong dramas na mas yung mas well, daily sa kanila, mas daily drama sa kanila umaabot ng mga 50 ganun, 50 52. Pero daily dramas 'yun kasi itong pinapanood natin mga yun nga, weekly kasi nga by by dalawang episodes lang. So personally, I feel that yung one is one standard Korean drama episode parang sakto siya and then hindi mo kailangang mag-commit in multiple seasons mm. like parang the story gets done in 16 yeah. episodes yeah. Diba? Yeah. and then you move on to the next right. story although syempre ngayon ay may mga nagkakaroon ng mga season <laughs> season 2 yung mga Korean drama so personally I'm not really a fan of yung um, nagkakaroon ng mga seasons kasi yeah. parang bumababa yung quality for me pero so, yon okay kayo um, any other thoughts uh, i guess to add yun nga na parang the, the 16 episode is a good point na parang it's different when you binge watch western series for example that go on for multiple seasons parang it's sat there's there's a satisfaction to watching like just setting aside 16 hours but you get a story na sobrang buong buo na na attach ka na lahat lahat tapos makaka move on ka na kasi meron pang isa pang pwede kang <laughs> ma- marami ka pang pwedeng i-consume na equally as good so parang you get exposed to it's like like what she mentioned din kasi escapism siya it's it's so immersive kasi talaga na If you get into it, di mo talaga siya mabibitawan. But then, um, that's okay. Kasi you're just there for like those 16 episodes. And then there's a world out there for you to explore pa. And you're never gonna run out of um, things to dive into. So I guess, yung nga, dahil nga pandemic. And accessibility. Like, not just pandemic. Kasi post-pandemic? Post-pandemic? Post. <laughs> post-pandemic naman na tayo now. But then people are still, you know, into it. And more people are still um, joining the party. Yeah. So. It's really for me the accessibility also. Kaya rin siya pumatok na outside of that. Kasi gets, baka easy mamirata dati sa Asia. <laughs> parang parang uh-huh. mamimirata sa US. Yeah, ganun, that's diba? true. So, yun for me. Yeah. Okay. Any ano? Ako, ano? same. <laughs> okay, same. <laughs> Hindi, ano naman, parang hindi rin ako fan ng mga season 2. Like, mm. Dream High 1 is superior than Dream High 2. <laughs> oh, got yeah, seven times. <laughs> On record. <laughs> sure ako, kaya ko ipagtagot. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. Wow. <laughs> parang ano, tapos parang yun, kasi parang this season, yung whole, parang feel ko yung siksik na talaga siya, like the first season. Like, feeling ko, pinag-isipan na nila, like, ano magiging run ng pawat episodes. Parang, so for me, even each episode can stand alone when it comes to like the story na parang, sik- ang dami mo nang hindi siya dragging, hindi siya pinapahaba lang just for the sake na pahaba. Eh. Like, wala pa akong teleserya sa Pilipinas na subaybayan ko araw-araw. <laughs> diba? Parang hindi siya ang daming, ang daming pwedeng mangyari sa teleserya ng Pilipinas. I mean, ay, ay, The Killer Bride pala, yun. Hindi ko siya na, pero maganda siya. Like, <laughs> hindi, yun, yun, parang hindi siya yung The Killer Bride kahit ang dami na nagsasabi na pahabain yun, na parang kasi isa yun sa mga pumatok talaga before pandemic or inabuta siya ng pandemic. Pero hindi nila pinahaba. So, Nalalala ko tayo, sinabi ng producers, hindi nila papahabain. Kasi sure na sila na ganito yung magiging flow ng story. Eh, it's medyo sakit yun ng Filipino producers. Na kapag hit yung isang teleserye, yeah. talagang sige, yeah. drag lang natin. Um, yun yung 
yun din yung medyo nakukuha ko when it comes to like western na parang ang daming seasons na parang hindi na talaga siya yung original plot. So parang ayun lang, short and sweet. Parang tama na siya. Parang there's a kind of like confidence and discipline mm-hmm. when it yeah. comes to mm-hmm. K-dramas. Na parang they're so confident that they make a good story. Mm-hmm. And they're so disciplined na parang let's keep it that, yeah. at that ano. Parang I guess it's a, maybe it's a Korean thing, maybe it's part of their culture, they know, who knows. Yeah, they know the, mis- the message that they want mm-hmm. to tell. Like, meron ka, aside from yun, 16 episodes, meron pa lang drama specials na one episode lang. Mm-hmm. Or even one to three episodes. Right. Mm-hmm. So parang... Ano, I guess they always want to know kung anong gan, gano, an, ano yung length that will serve the story. Yeah. And then they go with that. Yeah, quality over quantity. Yeah. Okay, we are actually down to our last question. And um, so, for the people na tinatamad mag, ano, <laughs> mag, magbasa ng subtitles, <laughs> nag-walk out, ano, magbasa ng subtitles sa mga tao na parang, like me dati na apprehensive kasi akala ko like poor like fluffy stuff lang yung K-dramas. Like how would you encourage others to get into K-dramas? Like what will what would be your like main selling points? Um so get started Isa. <laughs> Wala, parang as we've mentioned, there's like a story for everyone. Na kung hindi ka kung hindi ka mahilig sa rom-com, you could like try other genres naman. Um, wala. Feeling ko lang, just try and try. <laughs> Mahanap mo rin yung fit mo. Like, minsan, kahit yung mga favorite K-drama actors ko, may mga projects din sila na hindi masyadong met. I mean, feeling ko ito, it's all under like kung ano yung gusto mo. So, ayun. Okay. So, <laughs> gets ko, gets ko. It's, like, it's, it's so wide kasi eh, na parang it's got to... Meron uh, at meron. meron. Oo, ah, parang ah, oo, like, suntok sa buwan, like, makakaano na. Okay, ikaw. Meron ako, meron ako friend who just got into K-drama. Tapos, gumawa siya ng some kind of rule. Pero, for some reason, parang nag-work siya. Parang, watch the four, first, first, four, first four, four episodes okay, that's now. True. I don't know, I don't know why first four. <laughs> pero sabi niya. I kind of get that. I get that. Yan, watch oh. the first four, and then you can stop if you don't like it. Mm-hmm. And then, you can, tapos, basta, by the fourth episode daw, mahuhook ka na. And actually, nangyari yun sa akin recently, I'm watching this drama called The Law Cafe. Tapos parang at fourth, well, love ko si Lee Sung Gi, so papanoonin ko yun until the end. <laughs> Pero nung dumating ako sa fourth episode, parang wow, okay. Gets ko na yung fourth episode <laughs> thing. Na okay, dito, dito ako mahukok. Um, feeling ko kasi talaga, sayang for those who don't want, wanna watch because lang, I didn't wanna read. Kasi nga, uh, yun nga, the misconception na laging na... na puro fluffy lang or like rom-com kilig-kilig. Siguro kasi mas maingay yung mga fans ng, sure, <laughs> ng, right? oh, ng rom-com yeah. and kilig stories. Pero sobrang dami talaga. Sobrang diverse ng, ng world of K-drama. And ako, ako personally, mas gusto ko na yung mga slice of life stories mm-hmm. over yung kilig-kilig um, shows. And um, parang ngayon, I can recommend uh, if, if you tell me a genre or a mood or a theme that you mm. that you want, I can always recommend something. Ganun siya ka-diverse. And one last thing is, feeling ko, um, ang maganda sa k-drama, um, hindi nila sinasyan yung mga tropes. Like, they don't, uh, hindi sila afraid to re- do the same thing over and over again. But they know how to play with those things. Mm. And they know how to deliver the message that they want to tell. So, um, Basta alam mo, sure ka sa story that you want to tell, the message that you want to tell, it will always strike a chord with the audience. Mm-hmm. Okay, so Korean Cultural Embassy hiring. <laughs> <Hero, laughs> okay. And last but not the least, Nina. Um, well, first, super agree dun sa four rule. Kasi sa Chicago, Same. Um, oh. episode, I hated episode one to three. But imagine if I stop there, parang hindi ko siya magiging top one. Out. Wow. <laughs> okay, I'll tell my friend. So <laughs> yeah, um, it's really, sometimes it takes a while for them to to get into it. Pero um, I guess that's for me why you should watch it. Parang don't let yourself be hindered by um, yung mga ano mo, biases mo na parang. Because uh, you pa not try, so just give it a shot. Yun nga, try nyo lang. <laughs> Pag, let, the, let the story tell itself. Yeah, let yeah. Parang, yes, uh, exactly. trust, trust the story. Parang and there's so much in store for you, talaga. Kasi for me, I've seen some of the best actors I've seen are in gay dramas. Not True. just because pin apa kilig nila ako. In terms of like, imagine mo yun, like super na kilig ka, pero sobrang galing mo rin umiyak or like. Yeah, the range. Um, yeah, the range talaga of these actors, which is. Um, so refreshing to see every time. Because for me, who you know, for a person like me who appreciates art, parang, I love 
seeing that. Like, mm -hmm. it's such a joy. So it doesn't matter if um, it's in a language I don't necessarily understand. Parang their skill speaks for themselves in all aspects mm -hmm. of producing these types of shows. Yeah, and imagine like nanalo sa Emmys yung lead actor ng Squid yeah. Game. Parang I mean, it, it's a it's a gateway drug into the parang to break the Hollywood cycle. Yeah. Parang mm -hmm. ganun. So yeah, yun. So that's it for today's episode of Hello to Hayu. Yay! Yay! Thank you, Isa, G, and Nina for joining me today. Um, thank you guys for watching. If you have topics you want us to discuss, or if you want to see these guys either photo card collection or posters of K-drama idols. K-drama locations. Yes. <laughs> I, oh, G just came from, ano, from Korea, so I'm, I'm sure she has those pictures in mind. <laughs> so hit us up at hashtag hello underscore to underscore Hallyu. I'm Margie DeLeon. Thanks for watching.